yes, one of my favorite bowls. When I was in high school uh, in the U.S., I had a Yoshinoya restaurant right near my school, and me and my buddy, we would go. But he had this weird habit of he would order clam chowder as a side, and he would get spoonfuls of it and, like, mix it into his rice with his beef, and I would just kind of look in terror, just... Ugh! But today, let's be a little bit more civilized, and I want to show you how to make gyudon at home. This is my style. Everyone has their own little variation on it, but this is chicken, chicken, my spin on it. first key step we need to make a stock broth because we're going to mix that with soy sauce if you use just water it's too plain the japanese like the bonito flakes the katsuobushi and if you got some katsuobushi in your pantry then add in that katsuobushi but you can also use those anchovy kelp broth packets add it into some water you don't have to be exact with the water and then just give it a boil for a nice uh, 15 to 20 minutes then we're going to use one onion I did some misclicking on an e-commerce site and I got these baby onions, so I'm going to use two. Thin slices, again just use one onion, fresh green onions, and then I want you to chop these very thin because they look very nice when they're small. Alright, and then we're going to make the soy sauce for the gyudon. It's very simple. Three tablespoons of soy sauce, one, three, good, then two tablespoons of mirim, that's one or use any cooking wine, that's two. Then one tablespoon of sugar. The soy sauce needs to be a little bit sweet. And then we just need a touch of ginger. I would say maybe five grates of ginger. You can also use ginger powder, maybe four or five shakes of this if you got it. Yeah, that looks good. This is for a two person serving. I figured if you're gonna go through this, you can save the leftovers for breakfast or be thoughtful and share a meal. Now the broth is finished. I want you to measure uh, half a cup that's a uh, half a cup to the brim. Ooh, safe. Save this broth for another Korean soup or stew. Very nice. And now I have some chador begi. These are just thinly sliced beef. This one we found a new company and uh, it looks amazing. So we let it defrost. And this is Hanu, one double A grade beef. Of course you don't need to use something like this fancy. Yeah, just use any thick cut. Oh my gosh, this one is so thin. This is kind of like prosciutto. Ooh, it's gonna be nice. Now if you can't find chadur begi or shabu shabu cuts, you can place a piece of chuck or ribeye in the freezer. Don't let it freeze all the way through. Once the meat starts getting tough, use a knife and just thin very slicely. For a two-person portion, I would do around 300 grams in total. That looks very nice. Oh, I would just love to do shabu shabu. <laughs> let's keep going all right let's start the party we'll put this on a medium high we we'll just put a little bit of oil to get the beef started all right and put the beef pieces in oh i love that sound wow beautiful and oh the smell just amazing all right and as soon as it starts turning brown on one side we'll put in our onions stir it around for around 30 seconds then let's get our soy sauce mixture Let's give it one more mix. Oh yeah. Then we get our broth and into the matrix. And that's it. And all you got to do is wait until the onions turn mushy. Some people like a lot of broth. Some people like no broth. It's up to you. I personally like to let the broth reduce a bit so it infuses into the beef. As this is reducing a little bit, get a bowl of rice. Hot delicious bowl of rice is ready. Oh my goodness. All right. That looks wonderful to me guys. Woo. The beef has soaked in that broth. The onions have turned soft. All right, then let's make the exchange. Oh, Lord. Put that on top. And the key thing, guys, is you got to cover that rice. It just has to be a, a bed of beef. Not a single inch of rice should be showing. Oops. So we got a boo-boo. We got to cover that up. Mm -hmm. Now, this in itself is, is perfect. But after having lived in Japan, I got used to eating raw egg yolk and it's really good. But if your country is famous for salmonella <laughs> or, or, or non-fresh eggs, don't do this. But in Korea, our eggs are good for the most part. Let me just I'll drop it right in the middle. 
a little bit of spring onions on the side. And then of course we need some Japanese spice. It's called shichimi. If you don't have it, use some kochukaru. It's all good. Oh, oh, one thing guys. Don't forget about your past. You gotta add that clam chowder in. You know, you gotta get a little bit of that clam chowder over it. <laughs> Yoshinoya would be proud of me. Look how thin that meat is. This is the best part. Ooh, and you got some of that tasty fat mixed in. You know it, you know it. <laughs> All right, I'll stop teasing y'all. Best part, break that up, that egg, and you just start mixing everything together. Oh, hontoni oishi da yo. Umai, umai. I'm gonna have to go a little bit more with my spice. And bon appetit. My God. That is exactly that Yoshinoya flavor. Guys, can I just give myself a pat on the back here, guys? Mm -hmm. It's hontoni oishi. Daisuki, boku wa boku ah kono kono tabemono wa hontou ni oishi kara ato ne nihongo zenbu wasureta yo goku tabemono wa umai kara boku no gibun wa tadaima. Ah, I don't know if any of that made sense. Peace.